Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at an example illustrating the evaluation of inverse Z transform for an improper fraction using the partial fractions approach. So consider the following Z transform X of Z which is given as 1 plus 3 times Z inverse plus 11 by 6 Z power minus 2 plus 1 by 3 Z power minus 3 the denominator is 1 plus 5 by 6 z power minus 1 plus 1 by 6 z power minus 2. Now by using the long division method we can separate x of z as two components. The first one is uh, basically non-fraction that is it does not have any uh, rational polynomials and second part is a proper fraction or a proper rational polynomial. So the divisor is 1 plus 5 by 6 z, z inverse plus 1 by 6 z power minus 2 and then the dividend or the numerator is 1 plus 3z inverse plus 11 by 6z power minus 2 plus 1 by 3z power minus 3. So the first term in the quotient will be 1 so that we can cancel the constant and then we have 5 by 6z inverse plus 1 by 6z power minus 2. So we have 1 here and then the difference will be 13 by 6 that is 3 minus 5 by 6 is 18 by 6 minus 5 by 6. So that will be 13 by 6 plus 10 by 6 z power minus 2 and then plus 1 by 3 z power minus 3. Now to cancel the, now to get a proper fraction what we have to do is we have to get rid of the higher powers that is z power minus 2 and z power minus 3. So for example to get rid of z power minus 3 we can use plus 2 times z inverse. So we have 2 times z inverse plus 5 by 6 into 2 that is 10 by 6 z power minus 2 and finally 1 by 3 z power minus 3. So fortunately we are able to get both z power minus 2 and z power minus 3 off. That means we are able to eliminate both the higher order terms. Now we are left with 1 by 6 z inverse that is 13 by 6 minus 2 is 1 by 6 z inverse. Therefore x of z is the integer parts are 1 and 2 z inverse and the fractional part will be 1 by 6 z inverse divided by the original denominator that is 1 plus 5 by 6 z inverse plus 1 by 6 z power minus. Now we can find the inverse z transform of these three components uh, separately that is for the mm. let us uh, assume that 1 is x1 of z that is x1 of z is equal to 1 which implies that the time domain equivalent that is x1 of n will be the unit sample function and then x2 of z is 2 z inverse so x2 of n will be 2 times delta of n minus 1 that is the displaced or uh, shifted version of the unit sample function multiplied by 2 and then finally x3 of z is a proper fraction that is x3 of z is equal to 1 by 6 z inverse divided by 1 plus 5 by 6 z inverse plus 1 by 6 z power minus 2. Now we have to write this function in a form that has only uh, positive powers of z. So let us write it as x3 of z divided by z will be equal to 1 by 6 and that is we multiply both the numerator and denominator with z square. So we got 1 by 6 into z and we send the z here. So we have 1 by 6 in the numerator and in the denominator we have z squared plus 5 by 6 z plus 1 by 6. So clearly this can be rewritten as 1 by 6 that is in the factorized form z plus 1 by 3 multiplied by z z plus 1 by 2. Now we can apply partial fractions that is 1 by 6 divided by z plus 1 by 3 multiplied by z plus 1 by 2 is equal to a1 by z plus 1 by 3 plus a2 by z plus 1 by 2. Now by comparing constants on both sides that is in the numerator we have 1 by 2 a1 plus 1 by 3 a2 equals 1 by 6 and similarly comparing the coefficients of coefficients of z in the numerators we have a plus a1 plus a2 is equal to 0. So by simply substituting a2 is equal to minus a1 in the first equation we have a1 into 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3 equal to 1 by 6 that implies a1 is equal to 1 and then a2 is equal to minus 1. Therefore, 
x of z that is x3 of z divided by z is equal to 1 by z plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by z plus 1 by 2. Now the next step is to go back into functions of z inverse. So we write x3 of z as follows x3 of z is equal to 1 by 1 plus 1 by 3 z inverse minus 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 z inverse. So, that is the final form of x3 of z. Now, we can easily write the time domain function that is x3 of n will be equal to minus 1 by 3 power n u of n and then this is minus minus 1 by 2 power n u of n based on the standard definitions of z transforms. Now, we can combine all the three based on the linearity property that is x of n is linear combination of x1 of n, x2 of n, plus x3 of n. In this case, the weights are 1, so it is just, just a sum. So, it is equal to delta of n plus 2 times delta of n minus 1 plus minus 1 by 3 power n minus of minus 1 by 2 power n and then these two terms are multiplied by u of n. So, that is our final x of n. So, to summarize, uh, in this video, we have looked at uh, inverse set transform of improper fractions by using partial fractions um, approach. That is, x of z, in the, an example, x of z is given as 1 plus 3 times z inverse plus 11 by 6 z power minus 2 plus 1 by 3 z power minus 3 divided by 1 plus 5 by 6 z inverse plus 1 by 6 z power minus 2. So, this is basically a pro improper fraction because the numerator has a higher degree. Now, we can use the long division method to separate x of z as two components. The first one are basically like integer components, that is they do not have any fractions and second one is a proper fraction. So, by using long division, we found that x of z is equal to 1 plus 2 z inverse plus 1 by 6 z inverse by 1 plus 5 by 6 z inverse plus 1 by 6 z power minus 2. So, that means there are two components. The first component is basically 1 plus 2 z inverse which do not have any fractions, which does not have any fractions and then 1 by 6 z inverse by 1 plus 5 by 6 z inverse plus 1 by 6 z power minus 2 that is second part is basically a proper fraction. Now, we can find the inverse z transform by uh, looking at them as three components that is x1 of z equal to 1, x2 of z equal to 2 z inverse and x3 of z is equal, equal to the proper fraction. Now, x1 of n it will be simply unit sample, x2 of n is simply shifted version of unit sample multiplied by 2 and x3 of n uh, can be determined by using partial fractions. In this case, we, we rewrite x3 of z using partial fractions and we found that it is equal to uh, 1 by 1 plus 1 by 3 z inverse plus minus minus 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 z inverse and then x3 of n is minus 1 by 3 power n u of n minus minus 1 by 2 power n u of n. So, finally, the total x of n is combination or sum of all the three x, uh, x of n's that is x1 of n, x2 of n and x3 of n. So, finally, x of n is delta of n plus 2 times delta of n minus 1 plus and the uh, third term that is minus 1 by 3 power n minus minus 1 by 2 power n on multiplied by u of n multiplied by u of n. Thus, we can determine the inverse transform of improper fractions. Thanks for watching.